Coming up on Food Camp, we also tag along with four lifelong friends from the city as they travel to the picturesque Pentlar Wilderness in western Montana. There, the group spends five days learning to make mouth-watering meals like pit-roasted elk kebabs and line-caught trout, even in the backcountry. Then we'll see if our campers can take their newfound grilling skills back to the real world to create something as succulent as it is simple. Stay tuned. This is Barbecue Camp. This is Montana Cooking Camp. This is Food Camp. Hi, my name is Jason Ankley. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Sullivan, Parker & Cook. My name is Perry Tungate. I work at Charlie Uniform Tango, and we edit TV commercials for a living. I'm director of brand marketing here at TGI Friday, so at the end of the day, I sell hot burgers and cold beer. So I'm wondering if we do some flavor extensions. As a photographer in my travels, I've been to quite a few world locations, and I've done some traveling with Jason and Perry as well. Life can be pretty hectic. My day here at Charlie Tango starts off early in the morning. Every day from the moment I get up, hop in the shower, the second I'm out, and check in my Blackberry. A lot of my practice is deadline driven. I contact producers and creatives that I've checked all the emails, have the Wall Street Journal updates. A lot of times a lot of parties at the Walk in, I get some time to talk to my team, People find out how their nights went, what's going on in their life. Boy, there just aren't enough hours in the day. I just got out of a meeting with my COO, came back, had to knock out a few things before getting out of here, and I saw my brother calling, so I picked up the line, and. He'd just been online and found this camp cooking school in Missoula. I don't get to hang out with my uh, brother and my friends as much as I'd like to. Work and family obligations makes that next to impossible. We get together when we can, but this is going to be something uh, I'm really looking forward to. A friend of mine, Perry Tungate in Dallas, who I've known for probably 10 years now, and we've traveled uh, many places together and done a lot of things together, called and said he had an opportunity to go to a cooking camp in Montana and wondered if I'd be interested in doing that with him and another friend who we've also traveled with and it seemed like a fascinating idea. So after I got off the phone with my brother Perry, I hopped online and booked it immediately. Just, just a chance to get off the grid. Getting out in the wilderness, hanging out uh, with each other without any distractions, you know, just being with the guys. Best I recall from camping when I was a kid, camp food is marshmallows, hot dogs, hamburgers. I had a, an image of a campfire and an A-frame with a pot on it, and we'd be doing everything in that pot. And I was quite kind of anxious about what, what we might be coming up with for five days for that kind of thing. I understand we'll be doing some Dutch oven cooking. I don't know if I'd even recognize a Dutch oven. I'm looking forward to learn how to cook on an open fire, you know, and find out what kind of meals you can prepare uh, while cooking, not just your run-of-the-mill hot dogs and, and things like that. I don't actually know much about Montana. I hear it's a beautiful country. I understand that there will be very limited cell phone access, if at all. It's been many years since I've been away from a cell phone or email or, or any kind of contact with the city. All right, big sky, nice. Perfect. I'm a city boy, so uh, getting out in the wilderness and uh, seeing it firsthand, I'm really excited to do all that. Unbelievable! Look at this place! We arrived at 2.30 this afternoon in Montana and uh, Missoula and stopped there and had lunch. And drove up here to Phillipsburg, and it's just a fascinating country. I've never seen anything quite like it. The weather's been extraordinary. It's blue skies, lots of uh, wildlife, and it's just been gorgeous so far. The temperature here is uh, 72 degrees, a nice gentle breeze off this beautiful lake with the, the sun warm in my face. It's uh, incredible. It's, uh, it's absolutely fantastic. It's going to be a lifetime experience is what it's going to be. It's like every movie of the Old West that you've ever seen. The horizon goes on forever, and there's rolling hills and more cattle, even than being from home in Texas that you'd see out in the country. It's kind of the best part of every piece of the country that you could imagine put in one state. The Montana Cooking Camp is located on a 17,000-acre family cattle ranch called the Royal Tine. 
and lies at the foothills of the Pentlar Wilderness. After spending the first evening at a local inn, the group heads out to meet their camp hosts. Once there, they'll be roughing it to some degree, as there is no electricity or running water. Hi. Hey, how are y'all doing? Hi, folks. Hi, how are you? I'm Cody Hampson. This is my wife, Lorraine. We met Cody and Lorraine basically on the side of the road. They pulled up in their pickup. We hopped out of the car, shook hands, kind of gave us a landscape of his property, which just goes on and on and on. Real exciting, actually, to uh, finally put a face with a with a name. Well, let's uh, head to camp and get to cooking. Let's do it. Sounds good. great. Right. Thank you. All right. Thanks. We knew we were in good hands after we met Cody and Lorraine. And I'm telling you. This is going to be fun. Got in the car, followed them out to their beautiful land. Um, it's just an amazing expanse of uh, acreage. And I uh, got going. We made it. And here we are. Here at last. All right. So it's gorgeous in the summer. What's the winter like? Long. Long, yeah. We have two seasons out here, winter and July. And you happen to pick uh, summertime. It's so good. Lucky you. Each one. <laughs> so what's the bear story? Yeah, we are in bear country, and uh, we do have these uh, critters as neighbors. Um, a couple years ago we were on a pack trip and we came back and a, and a black bear had helped himself to our kitchen tent and, and basically <laughs> left it in shreds. Oh yeah. yeah. We saw that on the website. That looked a little Yeah. He couldn't figure out how to get in so I climbed on top and of course he fell through, through the ceiling. Oh my gosh. I had <laughs> on the table and... <laughs> so do we need bear spray? Everywhere we've stopped they said... <laughs> no. Okay. That's a no. joke. All right. Bears a are a nuisance, joke. but typically not dangerous. Hey, gang, this is Bill. Hi, Bill. Nice I'm Perry. Nice to meet you. How are you, Bill Stewart? Nice to meet you. Jason, good nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Bill's going to be uh, helping instruct uh, at the camp here and uh, Excellent. just all around crewman for us. Bill has good stories. He'll get. He'll keep you very entertained. More awesome. campfire stuff. All right. All right. Yeah. Head of entertainment committee. It's getting right? better yes. and better every minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, peppered, peppered with truth. That's excellent. <laughs> All right, I'd like uh, to welcome you guys to uh, Montana and also to the Royal Time uh, Camp Cooking Program. Uh, our goal here is to have uh, uh, some fun and also learn how to cook some meals over uh, minimal means. So we'll be doing some Dutch oven stuff and maybe cooking some fish and stuff like that. So there's a lot of people that wish they'd have done something like this and just never get the time to or never take the time to. And so I got to tip my hat to you guys. Cody, I would describe him as the uh, strong, silent type. He's uh, reserved in his uh, mannerisms and all, but he's definitely sharp. You can tell that uh, his wheels are turning and he puts you at ease. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad to have you guys. Great bunch of guys, you know, uh, city slickers, but nonetheless gung-ho and excited to come out here and, and uh, give it a chance. It's day two. We got up and had breakfast at the hotel. Then uh, we drove out and met Cody and Larray at the gate and Came on into the campsite, uh, met Bill, and we've kind of just kind of familiarized ourselves with the campsite, mostly with the actual camp kitchen, and it's great. Learn a little bit about Dutch ovens, uh, learn how to make cowboy coffee. Cowboy coffee, it's, they call that out here. I've heard it called hobo coffee. It's basically boiled coffee. And when you say boiled coffee, everybody goes yuck because they don't know how to make it right. And if you make it right, it's the best coffee I think there is. It's the only kind of coffee I drink. All right, guys, uh, one of the f most important things uh, we're going to learn uh, starting off is how to make good coffee. Mm. That's what everybody gets out of bed for in the morning. That's their kicking the pants to get going. So uh, we're going to go over uh, cowboy coffee. We don't have filters. We don't have Mr. Coffee. So we're going to do it the old-fashioned way. That's why the cook always gets up early. He has to get these things started right away. <laughs> so what time does the cook get up in the Usually about an hour, an hour and a half before everybody else. If breakfast is at 6.30, cook's usually up at 5. So y'all get up at 10 tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you figure that day from 4 in the morning till 9.30 at night. That's pretty standard cook day. In 10 minutes, that coffee is going to be done. But the one thing I like about it is when you get down to the bottom of the pot and that coffee starts getting thicker, now in New York City, they sell that for $5 a cup and they call that espresso. <laughs> Here, we give it to you for the same price. Excellent. Okay. Okay, you guys, today we're going to make some Dutch oven potatoes. We need to get the onion and the bacon sauteing. If you start crying, we have tissues. <laughs> <laughs> 
Loray is a little fireball. If she was an animal, she would be a hummingbird. She runs a very tight ship. As soon as we finish the meal, she's already cleaning up, planning what's going on the next meal, planning what's going on the next day. She never stops. All right, Jason, if you want to take that pot, and we're going to go saute it now. You can tell she's been doing this for a long time. You can tell she cares about this. Um, and you can tell that she cares about us learning about it. A uniformity in any kind of cooking and baking is very important. We are chopping potatoes and trying to keep our fingers on. <laughs> Good? You betcha. All right. Good to go? Don't over stir it. <laughs> and so we'll throw the lid on, make sure it's on tight, and that's Shake good. it, not stir it. Yeah. It's basically the cream sauce that these potatoes are going to cook in. She explained each step that we were going to do and then followed us through it and, and guided us through it. Cheese is good. That's right. You can never have too much cheese. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Well, that wraps her up. It's 5.30, and we've been working on a Dutch oven potatoes with uh, bacon and onions and mushrooms and cream and mushroom soup and cheese on top, and it looks really good. Uh, we're about to uh, start the chicken. All right. All right. Patties, gum. Excellent. Hot. I'm going to take this and uh, take what I've learned and definitely take the kids camping and uh, we're going to have a good time. My wife's going to be very impressed. Ready? Ready. Oh, wow. Voila. Yeah. If I could get you to put that spoon in, Absolutely. Jason. That's just enough cheese. <laughs> can't wait. It's evening of day two and we're just sitting down to dinner and getting to enjoy the fruits of our labor that we've been working on since about lunch and having some great Thank you, Dutch Jason. oven potatoes. All these potatoes are amazing. And enjoying this dry rub that we put on some uh, chicken to make it a little more flavorful, a little bit more Montana. Get a little spice in there. You guys really did a good <laughs> job. Yeah, you'll put me and Bill out of business. <laughs> Has anybody? <laughs> what do you think, guys? How do you think you did today, progress wise? <clears throat> Speak to me. <laughs> I think we made a good meal. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> Off to a good start. Spending time out here in the, this beautiful country beats the heck out of sitting at an office all day. It's, uh, we're having a great time. The, the trees are green, the, the mountains just gorgeous, and just waking up, it's, it's so quiet. All you hear is the, the streams running. It's really beautiful. It's day three, and we just witnessed Cody running the horses into the corral for the day. It's, uh, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. We saw it yesterday from afar, and today we got to see it up close, and it's really magnificent in this setting. Bill to me is a good old boy. He's easygoing, good natured gentleman. Bill's a character. He, he's definitely been around a while, you know, coming from Pittsburgh. He's got stories from every single state he's worked in. I think he's worked in all 48 that are here contiguous. Most of the guys you meet like, for the first time, you're not sure about somebody. You meet them, and, but they seemed uh, real friendly. We got along good, and they really seemed interested in learning when they came. They wanted, uh, they wanted to be here. It's day three. It's another stunning day in Montana. We love it here. It's feeling more like home every day. We're going to make sourdough pancakes.